All right, that's us hopefully going out live for for shot of the Chantry. Hopefully that's how you say that on PlayStation VR, PS4 Pro. Right. Museum. We look a bit. What's happening back there? Is that outside? Right. Is this a horror game? I don't know anything about this. Uh, there's no sound. Hopefully that's alright. Let me just... Uh, yeah, none of that's making sound. I'll go to new game. Got sound now. Real characters and events. Using the words they left behind. Oh no. <coughs> of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. Then said his friends unto him, Know that God exacteth of thee less than thine iniquity deserveth. And Job answered and said, My flesh is clothed with worms and clods of dust. My skin is broken and become loathsome. But ye are forgers of lies. Ye are all physicians of no value. Right. So we're in 1823. Where am I? This place is familiar. Not been here for years. Right, and that's how you move in here. This is all right looking. Is this a horror? That guy shouting. Physicians of no value. Um, nah, it can't be a horror. Right, look at the feet and then they pulsate and then you push a button. Nice. Rotation. Keep your feet still and use the <laughs> stick or right stick to rotate your view in the game. Okay. Oh, nice. But I can look about it as well. I can use my actual head. Maybe that's frowned upon. There's something written on the door. Is, is there? My accent's changed. Let's try the door handle. I mean... Uh, okay. Hmm. I don't like locked doors. I need to remember who lived here. What? The door's locked and you don't like locked doors. Can't see anything inside. I think it's a false window. Something to do with symmetry. Can't see anything inside. Right, no, I heard you say that. I think it's a false window. Oh. Something to do with That's symmetry. Weird. That was weird. Right. Uh, oh. oh, I am most wretched when alone, as every surrounding object reminds nice. me of my irreparable loss. But no place on earth would at present suit me but my Barclay home, and I trust my friends will not endeavour to take me away. For the bitter cup has a kind of relish in it here, which it could afford nowhere else. Pardon me, sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Something written on the back of that letter. Oh, was there? I remember now. This was the home of that doctor. Oh my god. He was quite notorious in his day. N notorious. Maybe this is a horror game. Nah, I don't think it is. This I've had this for a long time again. It just was way, way, way way through the menus of games on the PlayStation 4. But we're in. He's a physician. I'll be soused. It's like being there all those years ago. I'll be soused. I'm out of the county. Might be useful later. 
for Gloucestershire. Gloucestershire's on the back, so if that's ever an answer to something. That letter was written the day before he died. Bit spooky. Okay. <laughs> I should have been reading this. <laughs> I thought he was going to read it to me. But no boy could behave better than you did during your stay with me at the Chantry. Okay. Gloucestershire again. Right, so I don't need that at the moment until... This painting don't belong here. I'd remember an expensive piece like this. It would look more at home inside Berkeley Castle. Berkeley. The Berkeley family crest. Not much use at the moment. The Chantry. You keep saying not much use at the moment. Take it with you. Actually, you didn't... You seem to be a ghost. It's inscribed by the name Watley Montague. I've heard that name before somewhere. Now, I don't remember there being a Turkish lantern clock in the hallway. Is that what that is? This guy's really smart. He's this making me feel like an idiot. This was a country home. He had a townhouse somewhere in these parts, too. Can't remember where, but it'll come back to me. <laughs> okay. I think, I think we just looked at them. <laughs> That's good. I'm imagining... If well, I hadn't done River that. Seven. Oh, that sugar, was he about to say something about Gloucestershire. That? Linking Bristol in the south with Gloucester. The Vale of Barclay lies on the south bank of the river, between the two cities. Is he going to say that again? No, I was talking all over him. This deserves closer inspection. Is he going to read it, or have I just turn it over? 24th of January, 1823. My dear William, I hear by your father that you will return in a few days to Bristol. Be assured you will take with you my best wishes and affections. I am happy to certify that no boy could behave better than you did during your stay with me at the Chantry. Pursue this line of good conduct, and you will be happy yourself, and make your father and everyone who loves you happy too. Your affectionate uncle, E.J. Oh, uncle, E.J. Uh, the Chantry, so I'm saying it right. I remember now. His second home was in Cheltenham, Gloucester Way. Fine townhouse it was too. Uh, right. This was a breakfast room. I always imagined this was a centre of family life in the doctor's home. More comfort than I used to, but I can't put my feet up now. It's for putting your feet up. So my stomach is making unbelievable amounts of noise. <laughs> By all accounts, the doctor didn't travel much, but he had correspondence from all around the world. So we need to find three letters before we can get into the globe. Did I look at the book? I think I looked at the book. Home cooked food. Definitely something to come back to later. What does it say on it? Service. What did that. I'll read that book again later. I'm sure they will. Can you get in there? Another cupboard. I'll have to try a different way. Storage. Small cupboard, but probably bigger than my cell. Bigger than your cell? The lady of the house had good taste in furniture. Right. A painting by the doctor's nephew, Stephen. So this is real. This is based on a real guy, and it's no a horror. Ah, four candles. <laughs> yep. Four candles. Four candles. The condition of a servant would be too severe were they not allowed some time which they may call their own. In all well-governed families, a maid servant has the liberty every Sunday or every other Sunday of going to church. If she neglects it, it discovers she has little sense of true religion and may well be suspected of failing in her duty to an earthly master and mistress when she fails in that to her maker. Okay. Respectable families expect their pound of flesh from domestic servants. See. 
It was the most terrible of the ministers of death, always Small present, plant. filling the churchyard with corpses, tormenting with constant fears all whom it had not yet stricken. Some escapism. That's what I've loaded up. <laughs> uh, is there in here? Yeah. Apples from the doctor's garden. Is that it? Right, small smallpox is written on there now. It said service on the other one, didn't it? Can I go through this door? Uh, it looks like the unfinished swan out there. Oh, no, Thus no way. our hero, being plundered of his estate and bereaved of his children, says, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Who's doing all that shouting? Is this a memory? Because it's not my guy's voice. Beethoven and Mozart survived the smallpox with just a few scars, but many that ah. survived it ended up blind as well. Jeez. Nice. Right, so I'm going the right way. I was worried. At length, the infection spread to the palace and reached the young and blooming queen. She received the intimation of her danger with true greatness of soul. She gave orders that every servant who had not had the smallpox should instantly leave Kensington House and then calmly awaited her fate. Is that the holy hand grenade out of Monty Python and the Holy Grail? No, it's not. Right, that's it. Uh, smallpox, though, didn't it? Service. So I can... Where did I see that? It was on the book. Lord Dalkeith has been dead of the smallpox for just three days. It is so dreadful in his family. His eldest boy died of it last year, and his only brother, who was ill but two days, putrefied so fast that his limbs fell off as they lifted him into the coffin. Jeez. Right. And that's true as well. This is true, Hanks. Let me check this over. It left hideous traces of its power on those whose lives it spurred, turning the babe into a changeling at which the mother shuddered and making the eyes and cheeks of the big-hearted maiden objects of horror to the lover. Jeez, well... <laughs> uh... Every object tells a story. Six children from the same family lost to the small box. Jeez. Not every family was as unlucky as these poor souls, but one in five of those who caught it wouldn't live to tell the tale. If you go in. Unfortunately, not everyone who survived the smallpox could live with the terrible scars it left behind. Sadly, some even took their own lives. Right, let's get out of the graveyard. <laughs> Uh, book, book. Oh, what is this book? Listen. Were your interviews for a new housemaid fruitful, Mrs. Knight? Yes, madam. Both girls were hard working and from respectable families, but only the Jones girl has had the pox and plenty of scars to prove it. Then you must select her. I will not risk the health of my family. Pox scarring could often be a path into service. If you were lucky enough to survive the speckled monster, then you couldn't catch it again. Huh. Do I have to go to that statue then? I mean, they've opened that. I'm going to try and go to the statue. Should I be looking at that? What is that? Smallpox was a cruel, hideous disease. It's no wonder they call it the Angel of Death. Is that a real picture? It's pretty good looking if it's not. That snow and stuff at the front. I think it is and there's just a filter on those windows, but that's not bad looking. Right. 
I'm going to go back up to the statue of you. Looks like the key to a desk drawer. I couldn't expect that. Oh, I'm taking the key with me. Nice. Right. There wasn't anything else to solve there. It was just that one, I think. Small key to a desk drawer. What did I need to solve for the globe? I needed... More comfort than I used to, but I can't <laughs> put my feet up now. I need three letters to open the globe up. Something's changed. I'm sure those stairs were blocked a minute ago. I think I think he's right. What was that? Is that covered in blood? Twenty fourth of January, no, eighteen twenty three. Okay. No, I don't remember. My dear William, I hear by your father <laughs> that you will return in a few days to Bristol. From the voice. Be assured you will take with you my best wishes and affection. They call this place Chantry Cottage. I don't remember why, but there's been grand buildings around here for centuries. Chantry Cottage. Oh, I can go that way or I can go upstairs. I'll go this way. Maybe there's like this a This is where the doctor carried out his curious studies. I dread to think what kind of experiments he used to get up to in here. So I need quite a lot of things to get in there. Let's see what kind of things he got up to in there. <laughs> uh, what are they saying? Bottled. This also gives us to consider that diseases are not only judiciously inflicted for past offences, but graciously also designed to prevent future. A little recollection will tell a man whether he has not often been kept virtuous through fear of the consequences, even when inclination has gotten the better of his duty. Okay. It's quite intense. <laughs> Shouting all that are these direct quotes. Said it was true. I guess it's an educational game. Virtuous. There's no need to prove I'm virtuous here. His eldest son had a feeble constitution and other infirmities which rendered it inexpedient to send him to a public school. A domestic tutor was procured who was little older than his pupil, but though tender in years, he was old in wisdom and knowledge. Nothing on the back of that. Master Wogan must have been a bright spark then. <laughs> oh, there's blood everywhere. He was lying in the last stage of pulmonary consumption. Jeez. He had repeated hemorrhages from the lungs and was then evidently approaching his end. I was introduced into the sick room and there for the first time I saw Mrs. Jenner, the anxious and constant attendant of her dying child. The doctor's eldest son died of consumption in 1810 at the age of just 21. Certain classes are less liable than others to consumption, either because the exhalation to which they are exposed preserve the lungs in a healthy state, or because they acquire from their mode of life a habit susceptible of the complaint. Detour. Half of them took by consumption. Probably get me too. I don't get much fresh air. Hey, right, there's another door there, but let's look at everyone else. Nice landscape. All right, <laughs> that was that was short. You wanted... Nice landscape. Yep. Look at this one. Nice landscape. <laughs> it is. It's a nice landscape. Selected poems by the late John Dawes Worgan of Bristol, who died on the twenty fifth of July, eighteen o nine, aged nineteen years. So the young tutor died of consumption the year before the doctor's son. I feel greatly obliged to everyone who attempts to console me in my present affliction. But you, who know so much of the human mind, are convinced how vain are these friendly efforts. I had no conception till it happened 
that the gash would have been so deep, but God's will be done. No, none of those were um, anything to do with any other things. That's just a cupboard. There's no way through here. Another cupboard. I'll have to try a different way. It's the same cupboard. Small cupboard, but probably bigger than my cell. How you got three things to say about this cupboard? That's just a cupboard. There's no way through <laughs> here. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, I think I looked at everyone in there. But there was another entire way to go. He met with many discouragements, his notions having been treated with scorn and ridicule by some, and with indifference by almost all. Uh, there so was this plenty of paperwork in the dining room I could look through. Fair, fair enough. That, that's a good. That's a good shout. I don't know your name. <laughs> I still need. My memory's still a bit hazy. Some hangs in the dining room. I used all of these, though, didn't I? I got a key for a cupboard. Were your interviews for a new oh. housemaid fruitful, Mrs. Knight? Yes, madam. Both girls were hard working and from respectable families, but only the Jones girl has had the pox and plenty of scars to prove it. Then you must select her. I will not risk the health of my family. Ah, four candles. Uh, I'm lost already. Should I be going outside? Again. <laughs> said there's hundreds of paperwork in the dining room. This looks like the dining room. Doesn't it? The lady of the house had good taste in furniture. A painting by the doctor's nephew, Stephen. Another cupboard. I'll have to try a different way. <laughs> There wasn't really anyone else outside, was there? It was called the Chantry, from having in former times been in the possession of certain monks. It is contiguous to the churchyard of Barclay Castle, and the tower of St Mary's Church overhangs the southern boundary of the shrubbery. A shrubbery. That's it. Before King Henry, this place were a home for priests. Priests who spent their days saying prayers for the dead. So I can get into the the dining room. That's right. The fine mahogany table was the perfect place to make my inventory. <laughs> okay. The doctor had a lot of paintings, but I never figured out who all the artists were. That's the doctor. His eyes follow you around the room. The doctor. Is it? <laughs> That's the doctor. His eyes follow you around the room. That portable desk came with me on all my jobs. Can't believe that miserly pawnbroker only gave me a shilling for it. That portable desk came with no. me on all my jobs. Can't believe that miserly pawnbroker only gave me a shilling for it. That's a wine cooler. And he had an impressive collection of wines in his cellar too. That's a wine cooler? That's a wine cooler. And he had an impressive collection of wines in his cellar too. That portable desk no. came with me on all my jobs. Can't believe that miserly pawnbroker only gave me a shilling. There nibbling at thistles stand Jim, Joe, and Mary. On their foreheads, oh horrible, crumpled horns bud. Their Tom with a tail and poor William all hairy, reclined in a corner, are chewing the cud. That sounded like one of Chris Morrissey's jam intros. <laughs> I'm beginning to wish there was subtitles. Eh. Uh... I wouldn't have left things this untidy. I still have my professional pride back then. It looks like a genuine work by Bassan. It's been damaged at one point, but preserved with great care. There's something special about this. It's hard to read. So your book is out at last. Well, I can tell you that there be not a copy sold in our town. Nor shan't neither, if I can help it. <laughs> All right. 
Let me check this over. I have entrusted a most important matter to you, which I firmly believe will prove of essential benefit to the human race. I should not wish what I have stated to be brought into conversation, for should anything untoward happen, I should be made, particularly by my medical brethren, the subject of ridicule, for I am the mark they all shoot at. I see. I kind of believed in something to have resisted so much scorn. I remember where the, the ridicule bit was. Every object tells a story. Scientists terrify locals with balloon. <laughs> On Thursday last at two o'clock, a balloon was launched from the inner court of Barclay Castle, which rose to a very great height and was visible for a quarter of an hour. The same afternoon, it was seen to descend in a field in the parish of Kingscote, about ten miles from Barclay. The locals were so much terrified that they could not for some time be prevailed upon to approach it. <laughs> that is good. A nice Let's story. Let's take a closer look. A small quantity of the serum of human blood was poured over about a square foot of grass. Three sprinklings were given at the distance of a fortnight each amounting to the serum contained in 40 ounces of blood. The effects it has produced on the vegetation of the grass is astonishing. It is beautifully green and thick and has sprung up several inches, while the surrounding grass has but just begun to shoot and looks of a yellowish green. Let's put it over this. Uh, nothing in there. Right, I think I picked... Oh, what's happening down there? Yeah, I picked that up. I wouldn't have left things this untidy. I still have my professional pride back then. <laughs> I think all of them have died. Maybe you could give them a break. <laughs> um, that was, that was the experience. Experiments one, wasn't it? Yeah. So I still need to find... Something else may jolt my memory further. Medicine chest and a fatal temperature. Uh, I'm pretty sure I got everything except for the globe. Of which I found none. And I can't get in there yet because it's storage. Small cupboard, but probably bigger than my cell. So, upstairs again. Maybe that's where ridicule was. Yep. This was the doctor's dressing room. Looks more like a laboratory. Who's that dog? Is that a dog An unfortunate in the game? cuckoo, apparently. What happened to that cuckoo? An unfortunate one. It looks like the flood. Uh, here we'll. A paper about cuckoos. Not useful right now. Legacy. So we need to find something to relate. William and Mary. She's the queen that died of smallpox. William and Mary. She's the queen that died of smallpox. Both. William and Mary. Okay. She's the queen that died of smallpox. The doctor's previous education or his habits gave him a relish of any of the branches of pure science. He seemed to have a peculiar horror of arithmetical questions, and he exclaimed that he would rather look for an hour at a mite through a microscope than have his time taken up with such things. Am I upsetting the dog? Oh. Trophy. What have we got here then? What have we got here then? What have we got here then? Mr. Jenner, after the most advantageous and well attested success of the vaccine in England, I hastened to imitate this example by introducing it into the pious establishments under my direction. I am pleased to report its success and show my gratitude to one who has provided this service to humanity. The motive engages me to offer you the attached ring as a testimony of the sentiments of esteem and goodwill, with which I am most affectionate, Marie. 
Right, we found one of the letters there. This deserves closer inspection. What is this? I selected a healthy boy about eight years old for the purpose of inoculation for the cowpox. The matter was taken from a sore on the hand of a dairymaid who was infected by her master's cows. It was inserted on the 14th of May, 1796, into the arm of the boy by means of two superficial incisions, barely penetrating the cutis, each about half an inch long. This. There's something special about this. <laughs> I opened the thorax of a dog between two ribs <laughs> and introduced the thermometer. Then I put some lint into the wound to keep it from healing so that the thorax might inflame. But before I had time to try it again from the hurry of business, my dog died. If these experiments will amuse you, I should be glad that they were made. But uh, take care you do not break your thermometer in the dog's chest. John Hunter. Jeez, oh. The doctor's experiment scared a lot of people. But there is something pretty unnatural about it all. Yeah. Was that the key? Have I used the key? I'm obsessed with this key. Never seen one of them before. It's got a face like a timepiece. <laughs> Smoking, I am sure, is harmless if used in moderation. A man who has a pipe at his command always has a soothing companion, independently of its salutary influence on good health. I can't afford to smoke no more, but I reckon I feel better for stopping. This guy's quite smart. Right. Uh, we got experiments, I think. Just going to double check this. What's happening in here now? Just is that the rain? That's just a cupboard. That's no just, way through here. Just a cupboard. Certain classes are less liable than others to consumption, either because the exhalation to which they are exposed preserve the lungs in a healthy state, or because they acquire from their mode of life a habit susceptible of the complaint. We got in here. The nice. doctor's library. Dr. Edward Jenner, that was his name. Looks like the French had their own issues with Jenner's vaccine. He contrived in a short time to accumulate a series of specimens illustrative of comparative anatomy and natural history, which would have formed a museum of no inconsiderable magnitude. I'll be soused. The freedom of the city of London. <laughs> I'll be soused. Edward Jenner. Physician, scientist and fellow of the Royal Society. I seem to remember her name was Blossom. Doesn't seem relevant at the moment. <laughs> James Phipps. Take a better look in that fireplace. Huh? Looked at that. What is this? Something to do with the migration of birds. Not relevant now. I see. Anything on the back? Legacy. Right. Pretty nasty looking sore. Maybe I'll look at this later. James Phipps. James Phipps and Legacy is in. Um... Right Honourable George Rose MP. He helped Jenna create the National Vaccine Establishment. Edward Jenner and his parliamentary friends seeing off the anti-vaccinationists. <laughs> oh. Phipps went through the cowpox apparently in a regular and satisfactory manner, but the most agitating part of the trial still remained to be performed. It was needful to ascertain whether he was secure from the contagion of smallpox. Looks dangerous. I'll leave it alone for now. What does that say? Is that James Phipps as well? Right. The freedom of the city of Dublin. Freedom anywhere sounds good to me. <laughs> Dr. Jenner set a great value upon these letters. They were carefully preserved in a cover which was inscribed in his own handwriting. Letters from Mr. Hunter to E. Jenner. 
an honour which he was not always in the habit of conferring on more dignified communications. Jenner was a Huh? Jenner was what? <laughs> Dr. Jenner set a great value upon these letters. They were I still don't understand why someone would deliberately um... give cowpox to a healthy boy. Aye, aye. Well, we can, we can open that. We can do that right now. Because... Looks like the French had their own issues with Jenner's vaccine. Uh... <laughs> what was it? Pause on the Let me check this. His attention was drawn forcibly to the nature of cowpox while Jenner was yet a youth. A young countrywoman came to seek advice, and the subject of smallpox was mentioned in her presence. She immediately observed, I cannot take that disease, for I have had cowpox. Sarah Nellis, a dairy maid at a farmer's near this place, was infected with the cowpox from her master's cows in May 1796. A large, pustulous sore and the usual symptoms accompanying the disease were produced in consequence. Let's take a closer look. Are you in good health, James? It's been eight weeks now since you... Since you what? I never stopped you for saying that. <laughs> if cowpox wouldn't kill you and it stopped the speckled monster, then it was worth catching it on purpose. But I don't much fancy being given the smallpox afterwards. <laughs> Towards the southern extremity of the lawn, and shaded by the thick screen of evergreens, is a small rustic apartment. Here, in the summer mornings, Jenna used to receive his poor neighbours who came for the purpose of vaccination. In this humble fane, more wonders were wrought than in all the splendid temples of Asclepius. Okay. So we need to find a way to... I've not seen anyone that says legacy. On the door. What am I going to do now? The house feels different now. Perhaps I should look upstairs. Ah, perhaps we should. This game can hear me. Maybe we can get in the cupboard now. Another cupboard. I'll have to try a different way. with him spending all that time around smallpox. I wonder why he didn't catch it himself. So I need to find inoculation. Was there anyone in here? Have I picked Paper up anyone that cookies. said not useful right now. Inoculation. <laughs> I think the I've doctor's up... previous education nor his habits gave him a relish of any of the branches of pure science. He seemed to have a peculiar horror of arithmetical I selected a healthy boy, about eight years old, for the purpose of inoculation for the cowpox. The matter was... I opened the thorax of a dog. <laughs> right, no, we don't need to hear about that again. Then I, put... I can't afford the smoke no more. That's better. But I reckon I feel better for stopping. Yep. Right. Something has changed again. Has it? Are you talking about... <laughs> oh, it has, you're right. Dr. Jenner lived through the wars against revolutionary France and Napoleon, but Sam. I don't know what role he played. Napoleonic Wars? I think this I... was Captain Jenner's room. Edward's <laughs> youngest son. It's quite a lot happening in this game all at once. That's Oxford, where the young captain studied. What have we got here then? Dr. Wickham, who was one of the travelling fellows of the University of Oxford, was in Paris when the command for the detention of the English was issued. The committee recommended that Dr. Jenner should immediately avail himself of his great celebrity in France and directly appeal to the Emperor. Okay. That's Oxford, where the young captain studied. This deserves closer inspection. Sire. Having made a discovery of which all nations acknowledge the beneficial effects, I presume with great deference to request a favour from your Imperial Majesty. My humble request is to permit two of my friends, both men of science and literature, to return to England. One, 
Mr. William Thomas Williams, residing at Nancy, the other, Dr. Wickham, at present at Geneva. I have the honour to be, with the most profound deference and respect, your Imperial Majesty's most obedient and humble servant, E.J. Nice. Can I... Is that no important? Can I look at that? No. Uh, right. Should go over here. Some kind of military manoeuvres. <laughs> That's what I was thinking when I looked at that as well. There's something special about this. At the end of 1809, Napoleon issued a decree that 100,000 francs should be at the disposal of the Minister of the Interior for encouraging and propagating vaccination throughout the Empire. All right. What have you got here? Robert Jenner was a member of the militia, but he wasn't old enough to have fought in the wars against France. Militia. Let me check this over. The alternative presented by the French government to His Majesty, in language the most peremptory and menacing, was the evacuation of Malta, or the renewal of war. His Majesty is actuated solely by a sense of what is due to the honour of his crown, and the interests of his people, and by an anxious desire to obstruct the further progress of a system which may prove fatal to every part of the civilised world. I see. Well, we solved the... Oh, we soused. Jenna's vaccination helped the people of France when our countries were at war with each other. Napoleon even gave him a medal for it. Pardon me. We done well in the Na Napoleonic Wars, though. Case 22. From the arm of this girl, matter was taken and inserted April 12th into the arms of John Marklove, one year and a half old. Robert F. Jenner, 11 months old. Mary Peed, five years old. And Mary James, six years old. Jeez, oh. Robert Jenner. So he vaccinated his own son at just 11 months old. Uh, what was the other thing I got? It was just Napoleonic Wars, wasn't it? Which was this tour? Just me going at outside. eight years of age, Dr. Jenner was put under a preparatory process for inoculation with the smallpox. This preparation lasted six weeks. He was bled to ascertain whether his blood was fine and purged repeatedly until he became emaciated and feeble. After this barbarism of human veterinary practice, he was inoculated and removed to one of the stables where he halted up with others in a terrible state of disease. But none died. Hmm. Every object tells a story. It does. The smallpox, so fatal amongst us, is here entirely harmless by the invention of engrafting. The old woman comes with a nutshell full of smallpox, rips open a vein with a large needle, and puts into it as much matter as can lie upon the head of her needle. On the eighth day, the fever begins to seize them. Then they keep their beds two days, very seldom three. In eight days more, they are as well as before their illness, and they never mark. There is no example of any one that has died of it, and I am very well satisfied of the safety of this experiment, since I intend to try it on my dear little son. Nice. Let's take a closer look. Uh, what's not? <laughs> I have since met with a considerable number of these Africans who all agree in one story. People take the juice of smallpox, cut their skin, and put in a drop. They get a little sick, but nobody dies of it. Okay. The Reverend Cudden Mather. This preacher died a hundred years ago, then. The Reverend Cotton Mather. No. This preacher died a hundred years ago, then. Mr. Cotton Mather, being mounted upon a horse, addressed himself to the people, partly to declare that Burroughs was no ordained minister, and partly to possess the people of his guilt. 
saying that the devil has often been transformed into an angel of light. And this somewhat appeased the people, and the executions went on. Nothing on that one. The Reverend Cotton Mather was that preacher behind those barbarous witch trials in the Americas. Ah. Uh, should I go over there first? What have we got here then? A sermon against the dangerous and sinful practice of inoculation. Let the atheist then, and the scoffer, the heathen and unbeliever, disclaim a dependence upon providence, dispute the wisdom of God's government, and deny obedience to his laws. Let them inoculate and be inoculated, whose hope is only in and for this life. Hmm. The effect of the preparation and inoculation was this. As a child, he could never enjoy sleep and was constantly haunted by imaginary noises. It is without superstition, a noticeable incident in a biographical account, that the misery Jenner endured in the smallpox process should have laid the foundation for the extermination of the disease. To the memory of the Right Honourable Lady Mary Wortley Montague, who in the year 1720 introduced the inoculation of the smallpox into England from Turkey. Oh, this is right. Cool. This is the other side of uh, this. So I want to go back that way, I think. Maybe. Still not found legacy or that yet. But we've done inoculation. Is he going to say something's. something, something has changed? Maybe. They only got one of the letters as well, didn't they? The doctor's bedroom, where he finally passed from this world. Probably some sort of bird you'd see down on the Seven Estuary. <laughs> Mrs. Jenner's health became evidently more impaired. She was so slender so attenuated and so much deprived of all vigour of constitution by protracted illness. I visited her in Cheltenham the night before she expired and when she was in full expectation of the fatal event. She had long been preparing for her final account, but her death may be considered as the signal for Dr Jenna's final removal from public life. He retired immediately to Berkeley and never, except for a day or two, quitted again. He was below the middle stature, his hair dark, and a little inclining to curl, and it was observed at his death that he was not the least grey. He was rather nearsighted, but never made use of glasses. His dress was black, a large collar to the coat, and loose, low trousers. The dress of the day. Shadow portraits were very fashionable, but not worth much. She was elegant in her manners, accomplished in her mind, and possessed an understanding of great vigour. She had been an invalid for a considerable time before her marriage, and never enjoyed robust health. Both his wife and son were taken by consumption. After all he did for medicine, that must have been hard to cope with. That's a very distinguished portrait of the doctor. This deserves closer inspection. I avail myself on this occasion to render you my portion of the tribute of gratitude due to you from the whole human family. Medicine has never before produced any single improvement of such utility. You have erased from the calendar of human afflictions one of its greatest. Yours is the comfortable reflection that mankind can never forget that you have lived. Future nations will know by history only that the loathsome smallpox has existed, and by you has been exterminated. Accept the most fervent wishes for your health and happiness, and assurances of the greatest respect and consideration. 
Thomas Jefferson. Nice. So we found all the letters for the globe. Jenner certainly had friends in high places. This might look at it later. Matches. Sorry. Aye, so legacy's in there as well. This thing keeps turning up. Probably important later. Yeah, legacy. Uh, so Something has changed again. <laughs> Is it the the house? The the house. What's it called? The globe. The world. Has that changed? Vaccination wasn't Jenna's only legacy. Uh, but I forget what else he got up to. That's still shut. Right, so we can go get legacy, but we'll go to the globe. In, here. in 1978, Janet Parker became the last recorded victim of smallpox in a laboratory accident at the University of Birmingham in the UK. The virus is thought to have escaped through a ventilation shaft in the medical school where Mrs. Parker worked in the photographic department. Birmingham was braced for a catastrophic smallpox epidemic. But mercifully, she was the only person to die of smallpox in the outbreak. Right, so, uh, I think most of the legacy stuff was upstairs, wasn't it? No, well, we can come back to the experiments room in a minute. <laughs> but there's definitely one in here, at least one. Is that? What did I just pick up there? I avail myself of this occasion to render you my portion of the tribute of gratitude due to you from the whole human family. That's, uh, Medicine has never Thomas before Jefferson, produced any single improvement. It was his intention that it should have first appeared before the public in the transactions of the Royal Society. When the subject was laid before the President, Jenna was given to understand that he should be cautious and prudent and ought not to risk his reputation by presenting to the learned body anything which appeared so much at variance with established knowledge. The painful disappointment which he experienced caused this design to be abandoned and the work appeared as a separate publication. Hmm. Let me check this over. Dr. Jenner's discovery is unquestionably the greatest discovery ever made for the preservation of the human species. It is proved that in these United Kingdoms alone, 45,000 persons die annually of the smallpox. But throughout the world, not a second is struck by the hand of time when a victim is not sacrificed at the altar of that most horrible of all disorders. I shall therefore move that a sum not less than £10,000 be granted, but when I do this, I declare I do not think it sufficient. If the House should think it right to adopt any larger sum, I shall hold myself free to vote for it. Hmm. Right. So, legacy was two other places. Uh, Every object tells a story. Nice. Dear Jenna. Your paper on the cuckoo has been read, passed the council, and is in print in the philosophical transactions. I spoke to Sir Joseph Banks about your wish to be a fellow of the Royal Society. Sir Joseph has not the least objection, and will give us all his assistance. But he thinks the paper had better be first printed and delivered, and let the people rest a little upon it. This will put off the certificate till the beginning of the next winter. I am, dear sir, your most obedient servant, John Hunter. Nice. Oh, I can't remember seeing whatever that last one was called. Was it in the bedroom? No. Side, a side room. Was it in here? Oh, 
I remember seeing it as well. <laughs> In here, maybe? No. Certain classes are less liable than others to consumption, either because the exhalation to which they are exposed preserve the lungs in a healthy state, or because they acquire no, no. from their mode of life a habit susceptible of the complaint. Selected poems by the late John Dawes Worgan of Bristol, who died on the 25th of July, 1809, aged 19 years. Uh, I know what room I'm looking for, but... I don't know where it is. It's maybe in here. Was it? The observation of the migration of birds were read before the Royal Society on November 27th in the year Jenner passed away. They were presented to Sir Humphrey Davy by the Reverend G. C. Jenner, who had the peculiar happiness to accompany his uncle in most of the investigations of the phenomena of migration. Jenner was first made a fellow of the Royal Society for his work on cuckoos, but they refused to print his smallpox research because it was too controversial. But his achievements were eventually recognised by Parliament itself with two huge graphs. I could do with one of those. Same. Uh, right. So, I guess he was downstairs. What's the entertainer? Oh, because uh, that door's open. The drawing room was where the doctor would entertain his guests. Some relation of the Jenner family, no doubt. So felt the towering soul of Montague, her sex's glory and her country's too, who gave the spotted plague one deadly blow and bade its mitigated poison flow. With half its terrors, yet with loathing still, we housed a visitant with power to kill. Then, when the healthful blood, though often tried, foiled the keen lancet by the severn side, resisting uncontaminated still, the purple pest and unremitting skill. When the plain truth tradition seemed to know, and simply pointed to the harmless cow, Doubt and distrust to reason might appeal, but when hope triumphed, what did Jenna feel? He was dining with a party at Bath when a questioner. Sometimes it just it's no up for letting me hear what it what he's got to say. He was dining with a party at Bath when a question arose whether the temperature was highest in the centre of a candle flame or at some small distance from its apex. Jenner, with his usual ingenuity and readiness, soon settled the dispute. He placed the candle before him, inserting his finger into the middle of the flame. He retained it in this situation for a short time. He then placed it a little above the flame, but was compelled immediately to withdraw it. There, gentlemen, he observed, the question is settled. Not the greatest painting. Must have had some sentimental value. The doctor cut an impressive figure in his youth. Nice. A flute. Can I play it? He could also play on the violin and flute, and he was in the habit of forming musical parties. I have seen him in his later years, after his renown had filled the world, and many cares had weighed heavy upon him, shake them entirely off and take up a humorous strain as he sang one of his own ballads, with all the mirth and gaiety of his youthful days. I think that was his brother, or maybe his father. A beautiful countryside scene. We've done I it. think I should have liked to have met the doctor. He seemed like a decent sort. He did.
Within this tomb hath found a resting place the great physician of the human race, immortal Jenna, whose gigantic mind brought life and health to more than half mankind. Let rescued infancy his word proclaim and lisp out blessings on his honored name, and radiant beauty drop one grateful tear, for beauty's truest friend lies buried here. <laughs> Ah, that's what he meant back to me, so I see. On the 8th of May, 1980, the World Health Organization issued a declaration that smallpox had finally been eradicated throughout the world. Since that day, not a single case has been recorded, and future nations will know by history only that the loathsome smallpox has existed. Nice. So, yeah, that was a, an educational game. The Chantry. Oh, and the menus. Ah, there's the credits. Nice, yeah, that was an interesting one. A true one. Cap out Dr. Jenner's house, museum, and garden and graveyard. I think I've got a few of these type of ones actually. I seen one that was like Grand Museum VR. Maybe do ones like that in the night time when I've been working and don't get home until late. More chilled out game. The Chantry. Wait, it's going back to the beginning again, isn't it? <laughs> right. That was pretty good. Cheers for tuning in, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. 
and I'll hopefully see you again soon. Bye. Bye, the Chantry. Bye. Bye.